Welcome back to another episode of Writing with Mr. Ruck Dashel. <clears throat> Today is episode 12, and we're adding dialogue. Wait! Yesterday, you said less dialogue. What are you doing? Are you trying to make my brain explode? No, I promise. I'm not. I, uh... I had this planned. This was not me going back and saying, oh, actually, I regret that. No. Really, uh, as writers, this is a great way to think about what we've done so far. Reread our story, look at the lens of dialogue, and whether the dialogue we have is truly advancing our story. Whether it's showing conflict or character traits. And once we've decided whether some of these have or have not, and we got rid of the ones that are not helping and are repetitive and boring, and it sound like your little brother or sister are just talking on and on and on and on and on, then we're ready to do some adding of dialogue. Because hopefully now we have an idea of what some good stuff looks like and some bad stuff looks like. So bear with me. I promise you're going to see why this works better to do. And if you haven't already, go ahead and get out your writing journals. Digital paper with blue lines on it and a pink line down the side. Although, I guess you could just use, like, computer paper to write on. Ugh. Ooh, that's disgusting. Um, I mean, it's it's yours. I'm not going to see it, but... Don't do that to yourself. I mean, in this time, I feel like we all need to make healthier choices than to write on unlined computer paper by hand. It's a disturbing thought. Personally, I know you didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you anyways. I really enjoy yellow paper with, what is it? Yeah, blue lines. Is there a pink one down the side? Mm, yeah, I think there is. We'll say there is. You can't see it. Maybe I've got special paper, but yellow. I've heard that it makes it like stand out more. I just think it's cool. Okay. So today's big idea is writers add dialogue. Yesterday was writers sparingly add dialogue, essentially, or else take some away. And today, and well, before I say today, yesterday, we specifically said that the dialogue we do have or that we did add had to do with conflict and character traits. And today we're specifically looking at types of dialogue and scenes that are helping to create tension for our character and story. And I had some fun with this, but more than any other kind of writing we've done so far, I found myself not just writing. I actually had to think to myself. I had to do a little bit, bit of planning, a little bit of getting inside the minds of my characters and saying, what would they really do here? What choice would this character make? Because immediately some thoughts popped into my head, and I just knew that that was not something my character would do. It felt weird. And that's a great place to be to where you know what your character is like and you go, no, my character wouldn't do that. Don't you make my character do that. So, big idea. Wow. Yeah, that's the example. So, what you're looking at right there, the parts in blue is actually from our first episode of the week. Uh, week three of fiction writing. And up there in the blue, you can see that we are focused on that setting specifically oh and actually that's not quite right that blue is episode two of the week so it's from tuesday this week and it had to do with setting specifically time transitioning so i left it there just so you could see that i'm kind of working around the same area now the part that's in yellow is essentially all the new stuff i added from before or deleted or changed in some way that was a big the big part i worked on and the part in purple is all that I wrote today. 
in preparation for the lesson. So uh, I think what I'll do is uh, I will read from where it says bring, because I love making that sound. Bring! Uh, although I, I think I'm pretty terrible at it, but uh, I like it that you can make fun of me. It's always fun for you. So I'll start there and I'll read through it because that's what we do when we read something for the first time. We just read through it and then I'll go back and I'll just read the purple part on its own, stopping to show you some of the moves I made and then explain why I made them. Bring. This was the moment where he had to decide and he wasn't ready. He continued his slow pace as the halls ebbed and flowed. One moment they were full. The next, he was alone again. Reaching the door, he could see his group already gathered, getting ready to play football. There was Jimmy, standing on the outside of the group, trying to get everyone's attention. By the time David had trudged across the field, the draft was finishing. David, what are you doing? yelled Quentin. You're on our team. Jimmy was standing there looking around, waiting to be given further instruction. He'd expected things to change after our crew had been taken to the office and hadn't counted on further rejection. Just say something to Jimmy about him being on our team. Turning and running, David yelled, Am I kicking? Quentin was standing there with a football in his hand, waiting, stretching back and forth, impatient. Clouds of dust kicked up as David arrived in their end zone, and the ball was tossed up to him. Turning back around, ready to kick, he paused. Don't say anything about Jimmy. Don't say anything. The next thing that happened wasn't planned. David didn't choose to do it. The words seemed to just fall out of his, out of David's mouth and then hung in the air. M maybe Jimmy can be on our team. Kids yelled. David tapped his toes back and forth in the dust. He looked to Quentin and then looked away. Quentin hadn't moved. He hadn't given a hint of having heard anything David... Ooh, anything... Ah, there's a period there I didn't see. That's always good. David turned to kick the ball off. Reaching his arm back, he took his regular step before swinging his giant leg through. His arm stopped behind him and felt like it would be ripped from its socket as it felt like a pair of pliers had wrapped its way around his elbow. Turning back to release himself from this death grip, he saw that Quentin had finally come to life. Now he was listening. As he stared into Quentin's eyes, he felt only regret at having said anything. Just kidding, Quentin. Funny, <laughs> right? <laughs> After what seemed another age, while David's thoughts prattled along, Quentin interrupted. Sure. All right. So now I'm just going to go back and read the purple part. And I'm going to be stopping to kind of explain some of the choices I made. Uh, first of all, what I'll say is every time I reread this to you, I already see things I want to fix. For one thing, I've kind of realized that Quentin doesn't say much. He's sort of the quiet leader of the populars. And that's because he's sort of the, the most athletic kid, the most popular. But he's not the most popular or athletic because he's super outgoing and funny it's just everybody kind of looks up to him and wants to be like him and so i think that something i'll go back and do is actually get rid of some dialogue quentin says because i want to continue to have this sort of one or two word thing he does and uh, at the end of this section you see that i did that so as i'm doing this i'm always thinking to myself is this character consistent is this character really doing these things that this character should do? So, um, and the same actually for Jimmy. I noticed that a couple of different times I've sort of made him be like trying to get everyone's attention. But then he's trying to get everyone's attention, but everyone leaves him in the middle. I just, 
I feel like it's one or the other. If he's trying to get people's attention in the beginning, he's going to try the rest of the time. But if he's standing quiet on the outside, then he probably would just stand in the middle waiting to be picked after everybody's already went to their own sideline. But that's a different a different issue. Just trying to let you see that when we revise and edit and reread, you should be writing a lot of things down that you're noticing like, hey, make sure you do this. Hey, do that. Oh, this isn't working. Let's change this. But right now we're just reading through the lens of adding dialogue. And that's all I'm going to talk about now with this purple section. So the next thing that happened wasn't planned. David didn't choose to do it. The words seemed to just fall out of David's mouth and then hung in the air. Maybe Jimmy can be on our team. Okay, so I uh, I purposely said maybe because I want to make sure that David still seems to have a hard time making a choice. He's not authoritative. He's not saying, hey, Jimmy should be on our team. He's saying maybe he can be. Like, well, I mean, of course he could be, but no one wants him to be. So I'm trying to see... Uh, you know, sort of show that David's still having a hard time choosing. And that's backed up by earlier, the very last line in yellow, Jimmy says to himself, turning back around, ready to kick, he paused. Don't say anything about Jimmy. Don't say anything. So here is one of the key moments. We've got a thought going on in David's head, and then his actions and words do the opposite. And this is something that helps create tension. It's sort of where you don't know what our character is going to do to where in his mind, he's not sure. And then he actually says something that makes you think, Oh, maybe he's going to actually do something about this. Ooh, here we go. David is going to become this like leader, this guy who stands up to people who stands up to bullies, even though he still says maybe so. I have a slowly working towards this possibility and the reader hopefully isn't sure what's going to happen. So those are the things I did purposely right there. His thoughts are don't say anything. And then he says something opposite of each other. And I do that for tension. Kids yelled. David tapped his toes back and forth in the dust. So now he's kind of regretting his choice. He looked to Quentin and then looked away. Quentin hadn't moved. He hadn't even given a hint of having heard anything. David turned to kick the ball off. Reaching his arm back, he took his regular step before swinging his giant leg through. His arm stopped behind him and felt like it would be ripped from its socket as it felt like a pair of pliers had wrapped its way around his elbow. Okay, so just trying to set the scene here where David has kind of showed what he really is made of. He's not going to say anything else. If Quentin's going to act like David doesn't exist and said nothing, David's cool with that. Yeah, all right, whatever, Quentin. Like, you can treat me like I don't exist. I'm I'm down. But then something grabs him. And I purposely, to help create tension, am not saying what it is. Turning back to release himself from this death grip, he saw that Quentin had finally come to life. Now he was listening. You'll notice there are times where I have really short sentences. And you might say they're incomplete sentences. And that's kind of the beauty of fiction writing, writing stories. You can do what you want with sentences. I'm using choppy little sentences right there to kind of help create tension. Like you're trying to get through the sentence and it just is stopping. As he stared into Quentin's eyes, he felt only regret at having said anything. Okay, here we go again. He's thinking to himself, hey, you should make a joke, say that you were kidding, you didn't really do this. This is consistent what is, with what his thoughts have been, right? He said before, don't say anything about Jimmy. And now he's saying, just kidding, Quentin. Nah, funny joke, right? I know, let's play football. Whatever, who cares about Jimmy? And now the author is expecting, well, or the reader's expecting, so... Is David going to stick with that? Because last time, he didn't. After what seemed another age. So David's just waiting. He's still not sure what to do. Still classic David. While David's thoughts prattled along, Quentin interrupted. Sure. Oh. So, I actually 
have Quentin take away an opportunity for David to do something about this. Now, we're not at the point where we really um, see that, that Quentin, even though he says sure, Quentin has a silent plan to where he's going to make this miserable for Jimmy. And so David's going to get an opportunity later to do something about it. And we'll see what he does. But for right now, we had a little bit of tension and we think the problem is solved, but it's really not because that's what happens. We try to prob- we try to solve a problem in a story. It doesn't quite work. We move on, try to find another way. And the whole time, tension is being created. So your to-do list. Revi- read your whole story. Revise through one lens, the lens of adding dialogue that shows conflict and character traits. And I should have added in there, creates tension. So be thinking about what am I doing to create tension? Here's the deal. If you do one thing, as in if you only read one episode, you don't read your whole story. I'm betting you have one place in one episode that you know you could add dialogue to that's going to create tension. And more than likely, it's going to be towards the end of your second episode or earlier on in your third episode. This is early in my third episode. Because by the third episode, everything gets resolved. That beginning of the third, end of the second is the height of the tension. It's the climax. It's where we're like, is he going to do it? I don't know. Yes, no, I don't think so. Maybe. Ah! So add to the beginning of the third or end of the second. Create that tension. I believe in you. And that's been another episode of Riding with Mr. Ruck Dashel, episode 12, adding the dialogue. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So um, take some time, at least read one little section. I will be seeing all of you, or some of you, very soon, hearing your voices in our Zoom that's coming up, uh, 10 o'clock on Thursday, the third week of our online distance learning with our school currently being closed. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and that you're seeing some real change and progress in your story. And remember, as far as your character goes, and I'm starting to feel this way with my character, I need to be very purposeful about what I want my character to be and to become. And that should be based upon uh, what you want your story to be about, like the life lesson. So as far as this dialogue that you're putting in there that lets us know about character traits and then ultimately creates tension, the thing that I want to say is sort of a final little thing to think about. If you're not, and this is sort of from the coaching world, uh, if you're not coaching it, then you're allowing it to happen. In other words, for writing, if you're not purposely making your character do something, then you're allowing him to be however he ends up being on the paper or she ends up being on the paper. So purposely choose what your character is going to do. Make the choice. Don't be like David and not be sure how to make a choice. Make the choice. Make him do what he should be doing. Otherwise, you're just letting your character be whatever they want to be. And we don't let our characters be whatever they want to be. We are writing the story. All right, that's enough for me. I'm sure I went way too long. All of you stay safe, stay healthy, take care. Peace.